Hey, Vision. Wow, I heard it, uh, I heard it said this week by a, uh, a high-standing leader in the Christian community that he felt like that Billy Graham was the most influential Christian since the Apostle Paul. I mean, you think about that. The guy who wrote about half of the New Testament, since him to now, that this man, Billy Graham, influenced more people for eternity. And I would agree with that. I mean, think of the, and I love the, the, the different images of crowds and just a couple guys, of rich, powerful people and little kids. And to Billy, it, it did not matter. He would do anything for anyone to point them to Christ. And the tendency sometimes with us might be to say, well, <laughs> then what am I doing? Oh, man. I mean, how do I, as a, as a pastor, get up and follow that? Or how do you go to live your life? I, I'm not Billy Graham. That's not the point. The point is, is that God wants you to be you. And when you go into work tomorrow, you be you. And when you go to school tomorrow, you be you. And you shine your light for Christ in your world. Because think about this, and I'll start on the message. If, uh, let's, let's say that, that Cameron was in a house that was burning down, and Tony came over there to save him and pulled him out and saved his life. Think about the way Cameron's parents and Cameron feel about Tony. Honestly, they don't care if Tony's ever saved anybody else's life or if he ever saves anyone else's life again. He saved him. So you think about the fact if you are used by God to lead even one person to Christ, to that person, you're even more important than Billy Graham. And honestly, you are. When God uses you, it's not about millions. It's about one person at a time being used by God. You be you. Okay, now Billy Graham, I know he would love today's message. I'm talking about wisdom. Billy was a man, you know, was a prayerful man who said, God, please help me know what to do, how to do it, the right way to live. It's wisdom. This series, we're wrapping it up today. And so today we're dealing with this, this problem that we all face tough decisions in life. So say tough decisions. And would you agree with me? You face tough decisions all the time. I mean, if you look and feel the weight of, if you had one or two tough decisions a day, you're talking, that's hundreds in a year. That's thousands in a decade. That's, that's countless number of decisions in a lifetime. It's a problem. We face tough decisions, but good news, there is an app for that. It's called Wisdom. If you've ever faced a tough decision and you lock up, or you face a tough decision and say, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm not sure. There's an app for that. It's called Wisdom. So as we talk about this today, if you've got your takeaway card or you've got your Bible app, pull that out. We're going to unpack wisdom today because I need help with this. All week long, I'm thinking, God, I'm making decisions. I, I want to make the wise choice. Help me make the wise choice. That leads us to our bottom line. God wants to help you make the wise choice in every decision you have in life. Trust me, God does not want you to make the unwise choice. Also, God does not want to be distant and you just make it on your own. God literally wants to be in your world and help you make a wise choice every time you have a tough decision. Is that good news? I think it's great news. You don't have to pay for it. You, you don't have to search for it. You say, God, I, I want that. As we look in the Bible today, God says, I want to help you do that. So I think about wisdom this problem, this bottom line, I say, okay, let's first and let's define wisdom. So make sure we're kind of on the same track. I found two definitions I like. The first one is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So you say, okay, I've, I've been through things. I've got experience. I'm learning some things. I've got knowledge. And how am I going to respond to it and decide? That's good judgment. That's wisdom. The second one, the ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action. Has anybody in here ever not followed the best course of action? I mean, if we're being real, we've had times we have not followed the best course of action, but said this is the ability to judge correctly and yes, to follow the best course of action based on knowledge and understanding. So let me start here with this. When have I needed wisdom? Because I spent time preparing this week. God said, well, Matt, you just tell them when you've needed wisdom and you guys can figure out if you can relate to me at all. Because for me, you know, I, I needed wisdom when I was trying to figure out a college or a career. And made that major path decision for my life. I needed wisdom when I was considering 
Meg Fickling, and thank goodness she said, she considered me, and she said, thumbs up to that one. And I said, okay, I will live the rest of my life with this one lady. God, I need wisdom. Is this the right one? Clearly, she's the right one. I need wisdom in raising my kids. That me and Meg, as we get together and pray about our three kids and what to do and how to react and how to lead them, we need wisdom step by step in that. Have you ever been a spot in your career when you needed wisdom about what job to take or a job to leave or a job to say no to or a job to say yes to? You know, I had a job in ministry where I was making enough money and I had enough security and I had the wisdom to say, okay, God, this is not the path you want me on. Here's where I'm going. Hence, Vision Church. Can you relate? Have you ever, maybe in your job or in your circles, had to make leadership decisions in your job about finances, about time, about management? Have you ever, in relationships, had to have wisdom to know what to say and what not to say? Okay, man, let me show the man. Raise your hand real quick. Man, we're, we're in this together. Okay, there's a lot of times your wife either asks you something and you got to have wisdom to know what to say. <laughs> Or your wife needs something and you have the wisdom to turn that off or to stop doing that. I don't get this right all the time. Thank goodness Meg does not have a microphone on this this morning. I don't get it right all the time. But together we can help each other to have wisdom in our relationships, wisdom in our finances. How about wisdom in your time? Would you like to have some more wisdom in the way you manage your time? You ever feel like you get to the end of the day and say, I, I, I don't know how I managed it. I mismanaged it. I made some wrong choices. God wants to help you make wise choices in your tough decisions. So what does the Bible say about wisdom? And these are in your takeaway card, so you can dig in them this week. Starting off at James. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, and pretty much that's all of us. Okay, we're lacking wisdom in some way. You should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it'll be given to you. That is such great news. That if you come to him humbly and willing he will give you wisdom. And today we're going to unpack how you get it. Because that's, it's vital to me. And if you saw the video this week, I gave you a little teaser. I told you the first point. I got four points on that today, so don't miss it. In Ephesians, and I love how Mitch is quoting from Paul today, Ephesians, it says, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Okay, so say unwise. unwise. And say wise. wise. Let's make sure we're going after that second one. We want to be wise. It says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish. And I've been foolish. You've been foolish. But understand what God's will is. That's wisdom. And the last verse here, Psalm 90, 12. I love this. It says, teach us to number our days, or some versions say to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I was talking to somebody this week who's just struggling with purpose, struggling with direction. I said, Every day you get is a gift. Number that day aright. Make the most out of it. Figure out what God has for you in that day. Ask God for wisdom so you would number that day correctly. So the factors that affect your ability to make wise choices, these, these are so important. So make sure you get these, you soak them in. This can totally change your journey if you can track down wisdom. The first one I gave you on the video the other day. Hurry. So say hurry. I know sometimes in life we got to hurry. Most times in life, though, we can choose to not hurry. Look at this verse. Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? Make sure you get this. When you are faced with big choices, most likely you don't have to hurry through that choice. Your emotions will tell you, hurry. Someone will tell you, you got to decide, hey, you got to buy that car, that house, you got to make a decision about the job, that girl, that guy, that, that communication, make a decision. I'm telling you to slow down and wait. Now, there has to be some wisdom even in how long you wait. I'm not saying just delay and don't make a decision. I'm just saying slow down and don't hurry. That when we can step back and pray and not just talk to God, but actually listen for him, it gives God a chance to teach us something. In, in our home, We've actually made a commitment that if we're making a big decision, you know, car, multi-thousand dollar purchase, anything, we sleep on it for at least one night. We will not go out and find the Tahoe that Meg is wanting and say, that's it. We got to have it today. Sign. Let's go. Get home. The next day you wake up and like, do we even look at our budget? Do we even think about like really paying for this? I'm telling you, when you don't hurry and you give God a chance to work, 
You can collect information. You can ask questions. You give God a chance to speak in that situation. You have a better chance of making a wise choice. All right, second thing, reflecting. So say reflecting. reflecting. All right, Proverbs 11 says, For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. So in terms of reflecting, this is looking back on past decisions, on past situations you've been in, and, and just being authentic and saying, okay, the last time I, my wife asked me to do this and I didn't do it, how did that go? The wisdom this time is to do something different. The last time we bought that without looking at our budget, how did it go? Okay, let's do something different here. And in this verse, when it says, for lack of guidance, a nation falls, would you agree like, our nation's falling? Okay, before we're too harsh on our nation, though, can we look in the mirror and say, hey, is my house falling? Hey, am I falling? Because for lack of guidance, I will fall. You will fall. Number three, counsel. So say counsel. counsel. In Proverbs 13, it says, walk with the wise and become wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Does anybody here want to be a fool? <laughs> I don't want to be a fool. I don't want to be foolish. I don't want to do foolish things. So I want to walk with the wise. This doesn't happen naturally. Naturally, we're going to go our own way and do our own thing. We have to be intentional to get people in our lives who are wise. Whether this is a small group here at Vision Church, whether this is you find somebody who's wise, you say, hey, can, can I take you out to lunch one day and just ask you some questions and learn from you? Maybe this is reading books or watching videos of people that you'd say are wise. This takes time. This takes intentionality that you get counsel in your life to help you make a wise choice. You also get counsel from God's word. Like Bill's talking about, I'm going to dig into that in a minute, about Proverbs. You get in God's word, you allow God to speak to you as a counselor. Let me shoot straight here for a minute. When you're faced with a tough decision, you will never find a decision that is the wise choice that's in opposition to God's word. If you're praying about doing this, you say, oh, see, it seems kind of outside the lines, kind of kind of sinful. God isn't going to like that. Well, don't look in here because he's going to give you a different direction to go. He is not going to give you counsel toward a wise choice that doesn't line up with this book. Every decision, wise choices through the filter or the lens of God's word, he will give you counsel if you let him. So counsel, reflecting, and hurry. The fourth one is sin. So say sin. You're like, oh, man, I don't even want to say that word, Pastor Matt. Sin, that's, that's not fun to talk about. It's not fun to talk about. But sin directly impacts your ability to make wise choices. In Proverbs 15, it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. So think about this. When, when you're lost, when you're not even a Christian and you're wicked, we'd say, okay, certainly, God's far. God's far from them. They, they want to make choices. They don't have God to talk to. Okay, we got that. The cool thing is, is salvation is totally free. You go from wicked to saved just like that. You can do that today at the end of our service. But how about those of us that, that are saved and we get little pockets of wickedness in us where we do something, we look back and say, okay, man, I, I'm sinning. I'm, I'm hurting God with that. I'm hurting myself with that. I'm hurting my family with that. The things I'm drinking or watching or listening to, yeah, there's, there's some sin there. Do you understand? That is a blocker for God speaking into your life to make a wise choice. If we want to limit or totally block God as a counselor in our life, we'll have sin between us and him. Even as a saved Christian, I can have that blocker there where God's saying, man, I'm trying to talk to you, but you got this sin in the way that you're just not dealing with. And I'm trying to, trying to wrench that out. Remember I talked a couple months ago about when God refines us or cleanses us, he purifies us. God wants to do that, not just so we go through painful things, but so we can hear him better. So that when he tries to give us the information about a wise choice, there's not all this junk in the way. We get that sin out and we get information from God about making a wise choice. So you think about those four pieces of sin, of hurrying, of counsel, of reflecting. Those are four things we can all do to have a better chance of making a wise choice. 
make more wise choices, I think you have a more satisfying life. So what I want to do is I want to bring up one of our visionaries. And as I have been praying about this, I, got, I want to hear from somebody who's been, been walking this walk for a while. He doesn't have it all figured out. Because you know, if I called you up and said, we well, talk about wisdom, you're like, oh man, they're, they're going to think I got it all figured out or I'm the wise one. Or no, I found a guy that I've been watching for years. In fact, one of our elders, when he was a young Christian, he was watching this guy. So Wendell Fannin, if you'd come on up here, and Wendell, who I have been watching for years, he's a man, just like me, husband, father, but this guy loves the Lord. And Wendell, I thank you for coming here to share, because Wendell will admit it is not his strength to speak in front of crowds. Sing, maybe, but not speak, right? No. no okay. Well, why don't you take a seat? Is it on? There we go. You're good. You're good. Okay. So, Wendell, let's jump right in. So, in talking about wisdom, so what do you see as the value of any person having wisdom in their life? Talk about wisdom. Well, wisdom to me is... Yeah, real close. Right. There. Right here? Cool. Okay. Wisdom to me is, is seeking God through His Word and prayer. And so the value, I mean, that's value, period. But let me give you an example. When I was in college, uh, I had a good friend. His name was Ed Tubb, student for Christ Minister. And Ed was like the Apostle Paul. And so we all would go to Ed for advice and direction and everything. He would always set you down, open the Bible to a verse, knew right where to go. No, I don't care what you ask. Ed, I'm lonely. I need money. I w doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And he would talk to you about the Word of God, put it in context, and have you read it. And then he would pray the Word up for you to God. And Ed was such a wise man. Now, he's gone several years ago to be with the Lord. Okay. But that was wisdom to me. And I, and I learned through Ed. You know, later on in life, uh, I came into a situation as a family situation, and it was very, very difficult. And I wanted to get in the flesh. I wanted to handle it myself. Uh, you know, I wanted to pull a Nehemiah on them and, and pull their beard and smack their face, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And so as I prayed and, and, and I, I'd take it, I'd give it to God, I'd take it back. And so finally, one day I was in my office, my head was in my hand, uh, hands and tears rolling down my, my cheeks. And I, I just said, you know, God, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm just done. And anyway, I had my Bible open. I've been searching Scripture. And he gave me a verse and said, Be still and know I am God. Mm -hmm. I said, God, you, un you know, I, that doesn't make sense to me. Help me understand. So in the quietness of my heart, he told me, Leave it alone. Let go. Be quiet. Let me handle I'm God. Yeah. And so I learned how to deal or how to have wisdom through his word and through prayer and men of God teach me and show me. So when do you think about your life, relationships, finances, jobs? So wisdom has been beneficial for you over the years. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I've always, you know, go into God. He always gives you direction and he gives you the wisdom of where he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think of it as, as wisdom for me. I think of it as wisdom from him. Excellent. Okay, yeah. now, so you think, okay, so Wendell and me probably like, like saved age five and lived in church the whole time and taught Sunday school and yeah, all that. And yeah, of course. No, that's no. Not your story. <laughs> no. Not no, your story. I, tell, tell us some of your story, your history with God. Yeah, and I, I'll make this short, but I, I was uh, raised, born and raised in Huntington, West Virginia. No jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so in the radical 60s, and of course we did everything wrong back then and, and, and lived a life of, of sin, if you will, and, and went on and on and, and uh, was drafted at 19 and uh, went into the service and I spent a year in training and a year overseas and came back from overseas and, you know, I was self-medicating. Uh, I didn't know what it was then. You know, you just drank till you relaxed. And uh, so much so that when I was 26 years old, the doctor had to give me a B12 shot to just get me eating. And so I was just relying on, on, uh, on booze. But anyway, um, at 28 years old, I came to a point in my life and I said, you know, there's got to be something better than this. And, you know, I, I was uh, talking to my brother and my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law was the only person who could ever talk to me about God. And so I was talking to them one night, telling them, hey, this is going on, that's going on. 
I don't, I don't understand. And she said, I don't either, but God does. That's all she said. <laughs> I went to bed that night, 28 years old, pulled the covers up. I, I stayed at my mom's house. I didn't have a spiritual church background, and uh, I had prayed twice in my life. Once in the second grade, that little girl would give me a kiss. <laughs> For real, she she tickled me under the chin the next time. <laughs> Said I almost passed out in the second grade, but. And then once when I was in Vietnam, I was in a command group. There were six of us, and we were up on the DMZ. And the company commander had the maps out and the whoop antennas going. Everything they trained us not to do in NCO school, he was doing. And so I got about 20 feet from him and was sitting in a bomb crater like I'm sitting here, just sitting on top with my feet down. And everything went dark gray. Didn't hear anything. Didn't see anything. Just went dark gray. I woke up about halfway down. It came to wounded soldiers six of us three wounded and so i had to do some things quickly i went to the company commander and i told him on the other side of the bomb crate i said listen i've got to run for a medic when before i shipped out my mom tried to talk to me about god and i wouldn't let anyone talk to me about god no one and uh, except for my sister-in-law <laughs> and so she tried, I'd walk away. So I flew out to Fort Lewis, Washington, went through this huge warehouse, got my jungle fatigues, walked out on the concrete dock, stripped down out of my class A's, putting our jungles on. We flew over in jungle fatigues. You never put anything in your shirt pockets, never. And so for some reason, and we know the reason, but for some reason I, I reached down, I pulled out a note, it was from my mom. And it said, son, I tried to talk to you. This is the hard part. <laughs> when it gets tough, look up. There's someone bigger. So I, I looked at the company commander and I said, I've got to go. I've got to run and get a medic. I looked up in the sky. Wasn't being disrespectful. Just didn't know any better. I said, oh, man, if you're there, here we go. And I took off through the elephant grass. Rounds came in, but they weren't pushing air. Uh, it, I mean, excuse me, they didn't go off. They were duds. And I remember that happening twice. I believe God had an angel catching them. <laughs> but that's the extent of my spiritual life, those two prayers. And I'm laying there at 28. And I said, God, I blew it. And if you'll take my life and run it, I'll give it to you. And I never looked back. Um, felt like he, like the prodigal son when the father put the robe over it. I, I just felt for the first time peace and comfort. I just felt warm. You know, I felt like he had his arms around me. Mm -hmm. um, went back to school three months later. I left a mess at Marshall and went back, cleaned it up. Met my wife in Campus Crusade for Christ, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Meg, Meg uh -huh. knows that's the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, we got married, started having children. We have nine grandchildren, and we have fannins scattered across North Carolina now. Clayton, <laughs> Fuquay, Verena, all over. So uh, God has truly blessed us so much. Wow. Thank you, Wendell. Thank you. Woo, wonderful. <laughs> Okay, guys, so as we get ready to wrap up, I got a couple next steps for you. Because I hope God has stirred something in your heart today where you say, man, I, I, I want more wisdom. I do, and God wants to give it to you. He really does. It's, it's not complicated. Some, some next steps here. One is to start off by reading the verses on your takeaway card. Get in there and read these, these verses in James and Ephesians and Psalm. Read those verses this week and say, God, what, what do you want to teach me, Cassandra, do that. You know, Amanda, do that. Read that. Say, okay, you had something through Pastor Matt, but what do you got for me? What have you got for me? Get into those verses. Let him speak to you. Second thing might be to, to test drive a small group. You say, I, just, I need some counsel. I need some friends in my life. You stop by the Connection Center today, just jot down on a, on a card and say, give me info about a small group, a men's group or a women's group or a mixed group. Just try it. 
try it. Give God a chance to put some counsel in your life to help you make wise choices. The third thing is to pray and ask for wisdom. I think I jumped around in your card there, but the third one, because I'm going to land on the fourth one here in a minute. The third thing is pray and ask for wisdom. Don't just do all these things. Don't even just read and don't just go to a group, but you have to have your one-on-one time with God where you say, God, what do you want me to do about that relationship or my time or my money or that job? And give God some time to speak to you. All right, the fourth thing, and this ties into what Bill said during the announcements, is we're going to go through this together in March. Okay, we're going to go through Proverbs together in March. He said, I did it in November. No, no, God's got something different for you now. He just does. That's, that's what he does. When you go into his word, again, he has something else for you. So my challenge to you is March 1st, starting this Thursday, that you would read Proverbs chapter 1. And this is my personal ask to you. If you can, read it in a hard copy. Maybe additionally read it on your phone, your iPad. But I love in a hard copy because when you go through it, you have a chance to underline things and highlight things. And and here's what I did this week. I took two different mornings where I sat down for 30 minutes, spending my time with God, and I flipped through my Bible and I flipped through Proverbs. And when I go through here and I see the times I've underlined things and the things I've highlighted and the things I've dated, and it's almost like God is just bringing up different memories in me. He says, man, I'm I'm teaching you here about raising your kids. Man, I'm teaching you here about being sexually pure. Man, I'm teaching you here about managing your money. I'm teaching you here about managing your time. And when you flip back through God's word, it's like God is putting his arm around you like you do with Wendell and say, hey, let's, let's talk some more and just continue cultivating wisdom in you. And then the, the gift of social media, hey, let's, let's share some of our thoughts with each other. Grab that verse, post it. Put some comment on there. It says, man, God's teaching me this. Or, hey, has anybody got any counsel on this? Let's do this together as a family and, and share it. Invite other friends in. Get them in this conversation. I guarantee you, you live with people at home or at work or neighborhood who need wisdom, and they don't know where to find it. You can be the pathway for that. So the last verse I got for you out of chapter 3, to me it kind of sums up the, the book of Proverbs. It talks about being on a path. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. And I want God directing my path. And I hope you do too, because the times, I know for me, when I've directed my own path, a lot of times that path ends up in a ditch, or it ends up in the wrong spot, or I just wasted time, or wasted money, or wasted heartache. God says, if you will trust me, I will direct your path. That is what a wise choice is about.